I pressed record. Pressed record. Pressed record. Y'all teach us about everything y'all want to teach us about. <laughs> Blooper. <laughs> Instead of six four five, Frank fucking Chesco. This is so close though. What the fuck is this? I don't know why I always get anxious for no reason. It's like I because you have anxiety. Because right. <laughs> right? you have anxiety. I don't know why I get anxious for no reason. It's a war outside. It's a war outside. It's a war outside. And everybody acting like they don't see it. Hella black, 107. You feel me? We getting in the hang of this thing. We, you know, what I'm saying after we hit 100, you know, we 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 going strong every yeah, week, posting that so. content. You know, so shout out to all the patrons rocking with us. Go to patreoncom pie. We just had a little early moment on this podcast of extended content. So if you want to tap into that, but we have a special guest today. Michaela Coates. Do you want your whole name on there? I'm sorry. Um, I kind of just want Michaela. Michaela. They really gonna search me. They out. can but, they, but like, how are people like? like how, I don't know. What if people want to? I mean, we usually have guests that like we want people to support. And okay. Well, Michaela Coates. To, so it's like, how yeah, can they, find they you? could like, you never donate. Know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we gonna do the spelling because it's a lot of Michaelas. My my yeah, name go, is spelled go ahead different. And spell your name. Okay, M I C H A L A underscore M I C H A L A A at all. Social medias, if y'all want to follow me. Oh, Michaela, Michaela. No, just underscore Michaela. Wait, what the? At fuck? my social medias, I spelt my name and I then, know, then I then spelt put... my at. Okay, did you get it? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong? I'm with like, you today? are you lost? What is my, going on? This, this dear new it's African. To the side, bro. My equilibrium <laughs> is off. This dude, my dear new African. His chakras is not angle. aligned. My, my equilibrium is off. <laughs> the faster. Get it together. No, I'm hungry. You got some water next to you? Yeah, I do. All right. <laughs> don't pass out please uh, not on my episode at least but yeah it's a i'm excited for this episode and i'm sure y'all is even more excited because y'all you yeah. know have, have for sure known each other longer you know what i'm saying but before we really dive into this you know i think i feel the light i feel the shining on me Shout out to our producer jack for uh, reminding us about black joy because you know some new africans forgot about that for quite a few episodes so we're gonna share our black joy and then you feel me if you're a patron or if you're watching on youtube drop your black joy right now in the comments you feel me um so let's start off with our esteemed special guest what what was your uh <laughs> black joy basically is a segment i don't know if you listen to hello black you i can, do you do oh shit that's, i'm like <laughs> that would kind of defeat the purpose sure. of me being here <laughs> i'm sure you wouldn't be the first guest who's been on our podcast that would look bad though you listen to it I'm an intern, there. a men mentee, a guest. Well, yeah, you know. So, uh, what, what's some black joy you've had in the previous week or past two weeks, or yeah, what, what's some moment that you've had in the past? Whenever you, um, I think black joy that I have had. It hasn't been within the last couple of weeks, but like definitely within this summer has been like hosting the open mic night that we have for people's programs. Because, that shit was cracking. And that was like the epitome of black joy because it's like this is still activism, spoken word, all of those things are still like a form of activism. But we can still find joy and like talk about the day to day and like just the casual stuff within it. So brought joy to my heart. Yeah, that was fire. I didn't get to see yours. I'm sick, but there was there was someone else who went. I did. Yeah, I heard, I heard you shut it down. It was it was some it was some dope. Yeah. It was some it was some dope shit being spoken in there. Uh, um, yeah, no cap. The that parts was my I did catch. One. Yeah, oh, I've seen you before that? though, so yeah. everybody else was shook. I'm like, I've been seeing you know, this. I've seen this already. I I know what to expect. But this is also like your first year in college that I've seen you, so you probably like a lot better now. Oh yeah, well developed. Find the video if I still got it. Oof. Um, Searching videos. I feel like. <laughs> Oh, oh, Michaela. Fuck, I don't got it. Is proud of this Michaela, but this Michaela is not that proud of old Michaela. But it was necessary. Do you? We before I forget, we gonna cut a video of you doing spoken word into this. Welcome to Vicky and Mickey's Magical Magic Land. There are no magic props, no magic tricks, no magic wands, no magic tricks, no magic tricks. Just a bunch of magic. 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 Just a bunch of magic
there are no secret potions. There are no fancy tricks. Don't worry, I won't pull a cord out of your ear. None of that is needed because, because I am black, woman, and, and queer. Do you want to see me disappear? You want to see how fast I can morph? I can be a bridge, a stepping stool, and a problem all at once. About you, bro. What's what's uh some black joy, some new African joy you've had? Shit. Um, I think I can't remember if it was last Sunday. I had just randomly stopped by my granny house. No, I didn't. This is wrong. Like randomly last Thursday, I stopped by my granny house, and we were just having conversations. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make some cabbage on Friday. But on Friday, I already had plans to go somewhere, and so it was like Friday and Saturday. I was busy, so I couldn't eat it. So I said, just save for me till Sunday. And I can't remember where I was coming from on Sunday, but it popped into my head. And I'm like, oh, shit, my granny made some cabbage, some rice, and some pork chops. And I went over there. Shit was so good, bro. It was so good. I was so mad, so jealous at the Insta story. Bro. Like, then oh. she ran it back yesterday. Like, that's oh. how many was. I'm like, okay, you got to do this shit again. Like, I have been thinking about it for a day. I called her on the next Tuesday and was like, yo, we got to run that back. It's the way you was like, oh, you were mad before. Let me give you another reason to be mad. Cause my she- granny really be cooking. I know people got this thing where they just hype. Like, I don't do that. I tell people that they can't cook. You know, like like my that's other grandma, fact. my granny Merlin, she be listening to this. She she can make breakfast really good. <laughs> she yeah. knows this. This is I'm just saying just for clarity because people be online, you know, especially Thanksgiving. That it's always oh look at my plates and you see yeah. many stuff right. But and people be act, I know all that shit don't taste good. I'm just being real. Like I just so I brought my grandma Merlin up for context is to say like I'll be telling her she can't cook. You feel me? But she got her dishes that's good. And she will tell you this, bro. She make potato salad that's hella good. And she make good ass eggs and bacon. And malto meal. <laughs> she makes that shit. And that's it. <laughs> and so I say all this not to pit Everybody two wonderful got black women against each other and my granny Charlene and my grandma Merlin. They are both beautiful and amazing cooks in their own right. This is but getting my real. But my granny Charlene got mad range. And in that, <laughs> not range. in that range of food, she does really good pork chops, cabbage, and rice, bro. I'm telling you, like, shit is fire. I don't know. We just went off. I don't know. Fast got my brain on one. <laughs> Fast got my brain. Then I'm like nine days sober. It's just a lot going on for me right now. It's Coming at all angles. Shout out to all my comrades that's fasting and you know shaking a alcohol and 
you know, weed habits. Although I don't, you know, I have my, I don't think weed is a bad thing. But to the people that's, you know, testing their discipline and shit. And so we all just a little shook right now. And that was my black joy and my ramble for today. And hopefully I can stay on topic. And <laughs> Well, it's a good thing we got a guest today, no? <laughs> <laughs> because you finna be doing all the talking now. <laughs> I'm like, man, they, he finna go home. Everybody who listened to it gonna be like, so there's a poll between dishes and grandmas. You starting family beef on the podcast? Did, I'm I, as as much as I did loop around. I think I connected the dots pretty well. You did. You got that? No, I was okay. A great like, analysis of pork chops, like, cabbage. Because y'all tried to, yeah, y'all tried to grandma. Act like I was trying to start some. <laughs> Which grandma? Uh, oh no, no, better. no! It still was grounded in black joy. Okay, <laughs> it, was gra- it was grounded in your truth. <laughs> hey, you know <laughs> what was your black joy? Um, should I think just my own, you know, personal transformation? I was just reflecting in my own growth. You know, what I'm saying uh, for those of you who don't know, I changed my name. You know, what I'm saying to Abbas Mutakim and just. I think it resembles a lot of my growth and, of course, my Islamic faith, um, but just personal transformation. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Reading that piece you wrote about me, I'm like, just thinking about different ways I've grown in the past six, seven years, you know what I mean? Um, and just grateful for grateful for that. A lot of struggles, you know what I'm saying, in between that, but being able to look back and reflect, it's like, all right, yeah, I'm making some growth. And I was, you know, proud of myself for that, for sure. Same. I think first one to... Uh Double down. I'm also proud of you, and I think this is the perfect. I'm glad that you, that Michaela's here while we have this conversation, because you know earlier I was reflecting as well, and like it's wild how just like at this last well, the last week I said like me and you have definitely been like going through some like transformational shit as as a result of like Black August, as a result of you taking Shahada, as a result of us like really immersing ourselves in our readings and shit. Um, and it's just so wild how you know niggas be feeling so old, but then you realize how much further development we have you know to go and like looking at you at you just turned 21 in february yep. yeah That's like me. only 21 years old yeah. a lot of conversations me and her be having you know i'll be trying to ground her i'll be trying to like listen and be like okay like her reality is very real like that's what's going on and also i'm trying to give like my quote like sage advice as a nigga who like been through it and trying to talk her down like yo you're gonna be all right i know it's hard to remember that you're gonna be all right mm-hmm. or hard to believe you're gonna be all right because you ain't made it out to the other side yet because it's hella hard especially in that moment you in know the midst of a hill yeah when your stomach is bro. hurting and you out there with them crackers like bro, <laughs> in the middle of bumfuck nowhere bro for sure i mean I, I that's what i was thinking about like when i was reflecting i'm like there's some times where i'm like bro i do not know how i'm finna get through this mm. like some real times where i'm like bro am i finna make it through this shit like where you really don't be seeing the light at the end of the ten- at the end of the tunnel you know what I'm saying? But now I'm like, all right, shit, I, I got through that shit. And there's a certain joy you feel, post it. <laughs> and it don't <laughs> As stop. You can, and like, it's like, it's ever. still a, a continued journey. You know what I'm saying? You don't <laughs> just reach one fucking mile marker and then you're done. You know, journey, you got to keep going, keep pushing through, you know? So, yeah, growth, evolution, transformation, and, and continuing to be a, a better person every day. That's all you can do is, is strive. Is strive for justice, you know what I'm saying? Day in and day out. So, that's black our Black Joy, Joy segment. <laughs> now, for this next part of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to start it off. We have talked about Michaela Coates. Michaela Coates, and we have done some hinting at who you are. But maybe you want to give like an overview of the people who, you know, they first first time hearing you. What do you want them to know about Michaela? Nah. Who you are? What you're doing? Well, hey, y'all, hey. <laughs> I am Michaela Coates. Y'all could just call me Michaela or K or nothing. Um, pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a queer, black, academic, scholar, student, all of those, activist. <laughs> um, Don't forget organizer, because you've organizer, been organizing. <laughs> been organizing. Uh, educator and student. I am all of these things. I am also very, very, like, human. That's what I would say, like, humanitarian, like, Centering black folks, but overall trying to free all people as humans. Um, and currently, oh, I'm also an Oaklander, real six eight. No, I'm just <laughs> it's okay. You can East do that. Oakland, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, Oakland Bay Area, my home. Definitely formed a lot of who I am and my beliefs, my politics. And I am a poet, artist, and that is who I am, I guess. <laughs> Speak about being an academic. What are you studying? 
Right now, I am double majoring in women and gender studies and Afro and African American studies at an institution near you. No, <laughs> institution near you. I ain't gonna talk about this shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Why? Why'd you choose that as your area of focus? Well, originally, I thought I was gonna be like poli sci, Afro African American studies. Glad That's you not. Was. Those niggas are annoying. <laughs> That is me saying. Mind you, um, you not you. <laughs> yeah, nah. You probably not annoying to me, but I'm pretty sure they're niggas <laughs> who find you annoying. I'm pretty sure they're niggas who find you annoying. But uh, no, nah, I be seeing them Twitter it, wars. <laughs> it's Bruh, definitely some people who are online. The poli sci <laughs> niggas be all annoying on Twitter. Like, oh, I got my degree and I took poli sci one in the legislative branch and the this government and the judicial. And, uh, no. This is how change happens. No, nigga. So that's Free actually hella funny. So like, um, thought I was going to be poli sci, then uh, the the former president became the former president, and I was like, well. Um, any president of a system that's goal is to kill me and my people is a president who is trying to kill me and my people. Like, it doesn't matter who takes the seat. It's just the position overall is going to allow them. Like James Baldwin said, to blame a man instead of the system that, like, allows the man to do whatever he's doing is cowardice. So... I was like, mm, yeah, fuck that, like, poli sci stuff. And I go to a liberal school. So, like, it get real deep in the, like, oppression Olympics, especially in poli sci majors and, like, law and stuff like that. So I was like, mm, this doesn't feed my soul. I'd rather do something that's going to, like, fuel me to keep going instead of just put money in my pockets. So then I was like, well, <laughs> what else? So I'm black, I'm woman, I'm queer. It's a lot of stuff going on in like my life, my personal life and personal relationships where folks are um, falling into their identity. So I thought it would be really important to like um, center some type of, some form of my education around like gender, gender fluidity, like just fluidity period, because I know that is a key point in oppression. Outside of that, I am like, undergoing my doula trainings to become a black doula which is a birth assistant um because black women out here black people black birth givers are out here being killed and i want to like try to stop that at least educate people be an act um not activist but advocate um of them because a big part of it is just like miss information no communication around like people's bodies and what their actual rights are so that is what i'm studying and why sure well hopefully when you graduate you know come back around this area you know what i'm saying and when you know <laughs> people's program gonna have a dual program or yes. a dual assistance where we could help folks you know what i'm saying and free like services that. you feel me so shoot proud of you and all that you have accomplished so far you know what i mean that's i think about like where i was at 21 you know what i mean like where you at Shh. I think you should be a, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, for sure. that's something I definitely took away because there's been points in my like summer where I've been like, damn, I'm around all these great people who's doing so much stuff. Like, I really don't feel like I should be here. Or I feel like I should be earning my spot. But a conversation we had, you were like, no, like at 21, you and Delincey was not where I am and someday it's going to be a 17 year old who's where I'm at right now. And that's how you know you're doing the actual work. So that's been pushing me forward. I've been talking to my little nephews. They, they've they been reading Asada, and I'm like, whoa, not 14 <laughs> years old. So, like, that's definitely each one been pushing one. me. You feel me? <laughs> not For real. the slogan. Each one teach one. It's, it's a slogan, but I don't know. That shit work. <laughs> nah, real, real shit. I remember, like, again, I, I guess it's a perfect segue because we talked about it a little bit at the beginning where y'all going move it around um, if you're a patron you know you're a patron hurting. yeah but we just gonna at least touch on so this little like part for everybody but <laughs> it, yeah, i remember being hella impressed like i met you when you was a senior um no Are you I was a junior? junior you sure i don't know i was probably a junior yeah yeah um but yeah i remember being hella impressed and it was because i could just tell like <laughs> so much as like an educator they fucking Paint this picture of what like a student supposed to look like, or what somebody smart gonna post, so, supposed to look like. Right now, I went through that as myself. Like for me, I look like a nigga. Like I went <laughs> like, when I went to school, you know what I'm saying. But towards my last two years, I started getting on honor roll and shit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember seeing you and like the way I even got to come up to your school was because there was you know I was like yo I want to like 
meet some students and like you know do like kind of some feature pieces on them because that's how I got into like that was what I did with journalism and I mm-hmm. just finessed it into like a communications role at a at a district office. We love that. Uh, and so that's how I even came up to the school. Like I was writing like feature pieces, right? And the students that they presented to me were of course were of course people who they didn't really spend look like students. You know, and also the people who were the people who recommended them were not people who had spent time on your campuses. You know what I'm saying? They were like executives um, who probably just read off of a sheet, like based off like grades and then recommendations from the principals. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how I got up there. You weren't on that list. And I remember you saying like, you was like, well, nigga, why are you not interviewing me? And I'm like, yes. well, shit, they didn't tell me to. I'm like, what's up? You want to interview? Like It was like my first week or some shit. I'm like, I'm just, I asked for some students. You know what I'm saying? That this is who they pointed me to. But I'll interview you too. Mikhail was like, nah, you got to interview me if you want that yeah, real. My yeah, my perspective, it's just like, one, I was already doing hella stuff for the school. Like, all of the galas, all of the, like, talking to visitors and showing them around. So, like, my labor <laughs> was already being used. And then y'all not even going to feature me? Like, what? So, I saw Delincey and I'm like, why is he pulling kids out of class? I don't want to be up in here. Pull me out of class. Talk to me. Like, what's going on? And when he explained, like, they told me that these was the kids. I said, well, here I am, and I got some friends. I know some other people who would, like, show this school way more, like, <laughs> like justice than these students who don't go to anything or don't, like, really involve themselves with the actual school. And then also just, like, bro, you got to have people from the community of the school who you should talk to because that's like who get the real like I don't know the police in the academic stress like all of those things is not universal for all of the students I mean you just gave me a more realistic depiction right like they they gave the students who weren't getting suspended who weren't getting harassed by teachers um and who just essentially like you know fell in line you know like you got someone like yourself who is you gonna tell the you truth know, smart you know what I'm saying if, if, if she coming up to me never met me like like what's up, bro? I can only imagine what she's saying to the teacher. You feel me? Like in terms of accountability, in terms of like, bro, yeah. making shit fair. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, you are. You were a much better represent after working at that school for four years. Like you for sure are a better representation of um, of the school because you were the person who seen the good and the bad. Like okay, I excel in the classroom, but these niggas is also kicking me out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, and yeah. That that was. I, I like I told you when we first started. I still remember that day, and it's wild because I think you probably my first. Uh, I think like the mentorship role in terms of like the black community. I don't, I don't haven't said the black community in so long. <laughs> uh, the, the the black community that we're gonna speak about now. <laughs> yeah, so the mentorship role in the black community is one that's like it didn't really just fall upon you. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you are someone that excels at anything or is able to achieve anything, right? And so I bring that up to say. I had always been in a mentorship role. I'm the oldest of seven kids. And then uh, I just grew up playing sports. You know what I'm saying? And the, the the Bay Area sports community is hella small, especially like from like Pop Warner, right? Where you have, you probably start as a junior peewee and you play all the way up to midgets. Um, and as you wake your way up through midgets, there's like new kids coming through each year, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, I got um, kids that was like seven when I was 12. You know what I'm saying? Then when I was in high school, they was becoming like midgets then when i was in college they was in high school right so like the mentor so you always end up playing mentors like playing mm-hmm. mentor but all my mentorship came through sports you was the first person that i mentored that wasn't a part of sports you know what i'm saying um and yeah our relationship developed hella naturally because yeah it was we was both going through like finding ourselves type of shit at the same time like i wasn't that far removed from college that's why i want to say yeah. it was your senior year bro because no it definitely wasn't because i remember like It was my junior year, and then in my senior year, that's when I saw, like, All Black at the gala, and I was like, hella juice, fangirling, and then my senior year, All Black and you had came to the graduation, so I remember because, you know, they was on me. They was like, what, you know them? (laughs) 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 But I would say, like, yeah, I didn't even, it's weird, because I didn't start considering it a mentorship until I started talking about you outside of, like, the people that we both know. Me either. I was like, that's my little partner. Oh, <laughs> like, that's, that's like my brother. <laughs> it was that's never. That's for sure how you would describe it, too. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it was just like, yeah, that's family. I literally, hey, fam. Like, that's it. And then um, I think you made me 
consider like my non-negotiables in the form of a mentor because I never like from meeting you to like up till now I never want to meet somebody who's only trying to be the teacher and never has room to learn and I feel like going to you and like us both going through transitions at the same time I'd be like I can't do this no more you'd be like bro I thought so too like (laughs) me too I'm stressed too so I just I don't know, like, seeing your humanity, seeing that you, like, yeah, I'm doing this, but it's hell. Like, I'm doing this because I have to, because I feel like I have to, and the good is just coming with it. I didn't necessarily, like, plan or seek the greatness that you're in now. No, I appreciate you, for real. Yeah, and I think um, it's dope because, shit, on that day you introduced me to Layla, and she got to take pictures at my party a couple weeks ago. And so, it's yeah, it was... It was fire. I appreciate you for um, having the courage to do that because whether you, however you view it in your head, it's like, oh, that's just what I do. It's like, nah, that yeah, shit take courage. definitely you know? wasn't scared at all. <laughs> I was like, what? He got piercings and everything. He cool. You going to interview me though? Nah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> if that's the problem, who do I need to talk to to make it not a problem? <laughs> like, it will be a problem. And then you, you know, you came here for the internship. You was like, hey, what's up? I'm finna get on this podcast. Like, when can we make that happen? I was like, all right, uh, shoot. Yeah. Let's do it at the end of, uh, you know, your, your time working with us this summer so we can really talk about, you know, what the experience was like for you interning with us, um, working with us and, you know, what you learned and shit. And yeah, so so how was uh, the experience like for you, you know, working with people's programs and, and really, you know, you just you hit the ground running. You know what I'm saying? So how, how was that like for you? Well, I'm not going to lie at first. I was hella scared. I'm like, oh my God. I couldn't understand why either. Like, I'm just like, what? <laughs> I used to call the Lindsay for no reason. Just be like, fam, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm scared. What if they don't like me? He like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, it's not even about liking you. Like, what? You're good. And then I started meeting everybody individually. And once I started talking to people and seeing that they talk like me, like being at home, let me give some context. I have been in a state across the map on the other side by coastal on the other coast (laughs) for like three years, not being able to come home, really being submerged in academia, in the institution. So like coming here and not using like, oh, my God, do I have to put a greeting and a comma in my like emails to them? How how academic, how like professional is this? It caused a shift in me it was like these two identities that I didn't even see as code switching was like battling with work that I do on the regular and work that I actually want to be a part of so then once I came and saw y'all I was like what y'all ain't got no like uniforms y'all just regular outfits just doing it I'm like okay sweatpants and shit. right I'm like <laughs> Flip flops on and shit. It's like, what is going on? So, just meeting everybody <laughs> and seeing why the Lindsay was connected to them, you know, like seeing the similarities and how, like, y'all are all like very stern in how y'all carry yourselves in terms of the politic of the organization, but y'all are also open for room to grow and room for things to, like, for yourselves to unlearn. And I think that's the biggest thing that I'm taking along with like abandoning my ego is just like always give myself space to learn, always give myself space to like, I would say do a U-turn, you know, like always give myself space to get up out of there because sometimes the things that we learn just because it's like shared by the majority of people around us is not always right. And I think coming to this program or coming to the organization as an intern, like, I had to realize that a lot of them poli sci like practices is not right. A lot of the like all the theoretical ac- academic shit. Yeah, like even in terms of the stuff that fuels me in academia, like um, black feminist thought. A lot of it, like D and I was having a conversation of the theories are great, but where's the work? Where's the grassroots? Where's the actual like carry out of it? Because it's it's a lot harder than just talking. So I think that's some of the things that I learned from being in this org. And then also, like, the ability to make things happen. Like, I feel like I come in to be like, yeah, I want to do this. 
with no real plan or when I start planning out, I just like see the big picture. So it's hard for me to actually step by step and um, teaming up with people throughout the organization to um, specifically carry out the open mic night was like, OK, this is how you budget. This is how you make sure you have all your resources. This is how you communicate with people, because you always need to be in some type of communication community um especially when you're anti-capitalist you know like (laughs) um and just overall like you have to do the work in order to see it be done and that's the biggest thing because colleges be real protesty but no action or they protest on campus and and don't leave the block of the block of the campus (laughs) don't don't go into the community to do like community work campus and walk past a black student being harassed by campus police so it's like a lot of contradictions right and so i think being in a place that was like allowing me growth allowed me to see all of the contradictions and other things that i was associated with yeah i hadn't really i hadn't really uh because i remember us talking and you saying that you had your anxieties around shit and I hadn't thought about how, you know, what other organizing experiences you might have had that made it to feel like, especially with something like ours, which is um like super like relevant in terms of like pop culture and in terms of like organizing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh you probably had a idea of how this functioned before you mm-hmm. came. And I so I would even like the first week you got here, I'm like, look, my goal for you is to not have some like is to have authentic organizing experience. Like niggas not finna turn to turn you into no super activist and create these experiences that's not the norm. Like, bro, I want you to see how we function on a day to day basis. Second, I want you to learn. Like, like really politically educate yourself. Like that's really important. Third is like to take care of yourself. Not run yourself into the ground. <laughs> not you know run yourself saying? into the ground. Right. Period. And I think that is the biggest thing that I would have to say to all college students out there. Producing work for an institution is not worth your mental health or your physical health because I remember coming in or like literally like being on campus all campus long during a freaking pandemic getting up at all hours of the night to finish work, finish work, finish work. But as soon as something happened where I had to communicate to the professor, like, hey, I can't get this in. It's more like, where's your um, integrity? Where's your, like, where's your uh, commitment to this institution? Whereas doing work that, like, actually affects people's well-being, which y'all, like, feeding folks hot food. If I said I didn't feel good, you'd be like, all right, nigga, don't don't come in. Go ahead, get your rest. Do do the work that you need to do for yourself. So I think um, the real activism piece that I got is like you have to constantly be practicing it with yourself. You can't be out there saying be good to yourself and then you being horrible to yourself for the benefit of others because it's just going to like either it's not going to last or you're not going to be around to see any of the benefits like literally no fruits of your labor your labor is just going to be labor and that's it yeah i'm I'm glad you mentioned um being able to really understand like how the the launching of programs and the sustaining of programs happen because something that was a problem not even a problem it was a result of of like inexperience as an organization is like you know the inexperience when like the inexperience meets the reactionary and i guess they kind of like run parallel i guess but like it was so early you would see people ask like why are we not doing this why are we not doing that and it's just like bro the like, ego thing too you, you know it's just yeah. like oh i, I want to launch this program i want to do this it's like bro for one does this really eat, meet the need of the people like is this something that the people want or is it something you think the people needs uh and have you thought about how it's going to be able to sustain that how we're going to be able to make it bigger um and so i'm glad that's because I think that was something that was really important. And that's how we ended up having like mm-hmm. actual goals as an organization. Like, what are the th- things that we want to focus on this year? Right. As opposed to just running around, reacting to the times and, you know, doing whatever's might be having the attention of the people for a day yeah. or a week. And it's like, now we left to do some shit that people don't even really care about no more, right. not willing to support. And now the other parts that was actually benefiting folks are being left high and dry. Or the shit that actually contributes to the, to an actual movement and a sustaining of movement as opposed to whatever is pop and that's where yeah yeah i think that's something i've seen like once i was doubling down on like the the structure of like how i can make the open mic night into like a 
reoccurring thing. A program. A program was just like, you reminded me that just because I was focusing on the event that I was control of, I still had to do medical support. I still had to support and like read my books for um, political ed. I still have to do all of those things because it's it's a machine. It all Run runs hygiene. together. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I did that. Big flex. Yep. I am a hygiene contributor now coordinator coordinator Coord- he was running that thing i mean that was that was for sure dope to come in you know what i'm saying and like work with you this past friday and, and you know get the hygiene going and just i'm like all right i could just really kind of step away i'm like all right what you want me to do right I'm all right like, go open the box come on like, you're tall like, go, <laughs> thought about, go, go grab this go break down the right. bottom all right for sure it's good you know what i'm saying but yeah, I think that that's like the importance of, of really just building organization and seeing like how the different systems run. You know what I'm saying? Because it could have been, you know, all right, you want to do open mic, and like I'm finna do this every two weeks to start off right. with all these other commitments that I have to the organization, and like you might have burnt yourself out, and then shoot maybe or just an event didn't not happen. Done it. You know what I'm saying? But now we we haven't we had a conversation conversation this morning. Like, all right, we trying to get uh, open mic going once a month now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And actually have like a sustainable program. Um, you know, to be able to build community and, and a culture of revolution as well as the material need of, re- of revolution too, you know. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, it's been a dope experience having you work and learn with us, you know what I'm saying, and just being able to build, you know what I'm saying, in a real uh, authentic way. You know, I, I hope uh, as you go back to your, uh, your white school. institution, <laughs> yeah, your school, <laughs> I was going to say something else, but, you know. <laughs> Checking myself. Say plantation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah, it feels like. Yeah, we'll just settle with that. <laughs> Share uh, uh, um, You know, ho- hopefully this like organization work can like h- help ground you in your academics. You know what I'm saying? And as you uh, uh, approach your work, you know, in the academy, because that academy shit is just daunting. You know, <laughs> and, and it ain't always real life. You know what I'm saying? It's like a it's, it's a, like it's a bubble, a fake intellectual bubble. Not real life at all. It's like. But, Very, mm-hmm. Yeah, but now you can see what happens when theory meets action. You know what I'm saying? Like right. now you can see, and now you can find the real value of like, okay, now how now you can approach that your approach your studies that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, whatever you learning in class, like how can I make this applicable? Applicable? Because mm-hmm. I think, um, or is it? You yeah, feel me? Is it, is, is it even? You know what I mean? I think one of the things that helped me, like still being close to academia and being in um, political ed is like grounding it in the time of when it was written. And I think that's really important because a lot of activists nowadays be like reading the stuff that happened with the party or seeing that stuff that happened like in the past and just be like, that would never work or some, 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 but it's all because they think about it in now in like the time of now. And they don't actually think about all of the like contextual, like historical context and everything else outside of that, just like in terms of who to center and how to communicate the actual, like um, the event, like how, who is that going to leave out? Who is that going to include, you know, like understanding that um, there are going to be parts of my work that don't serve all of the people that I wanted to serve. But that is a part of the work, too, you know, like in addition. So I think learning that in the program and also like I think the biggest thing that I've been able to be proud of is just seeing the full like, I don't know, the full like cycle of the medical van because like coming out here and not being around and like seeing all of the background work and meeting and researching and stuff like that and now it's being used and like putting stuff into it and people are actually getting like wound um trainings and stuff like that being a part of stuff that is going to last outside of me makes me feel a lot better and makes me feel like I can live my life without ego because it's outside of me it doesn't really matter so yeah how do you we had a conversation i think last week and you expressed um you know not wanting to go back <laughs> just wanted to give you the space to process that because i think me and b could offer some advice i've already offered you my advice but maybe you want to rehear or get some new some new insight from b no i don't want to go back um it snows over there and every time it's winter i call somebody and let them know that hell froze over uh <laughs> that is the epitome of like 13 colonies white devil you know type shit i don't want to go back i like after my first year of going 
I I didn't want to return, but it's a part of one. <laughs> I'm in debt now, so I want to get whatever I can in exchange too. There's a couple more grants that I'm eligible for, so I want to <laughs> use them for their money. And three, like, I'm not going to lie, academia does give some resources that I would not have otherwise like even in terms of like what type of school or where the school is located there's some stuff that I have access to that otherwise being a black queer woman in Oakland California would not have access to so like <clears throat> hell no I don't want to go back at all but I am trying hard to graduate early so that I could like come back to the organization or like just continue my life <laughs> outside of the school almost up up and said the name felt passionate about that one <laughs> i mean i think you already you already have the answers yourself take the resources from the institution and bring it back to the people you know what i'm saying and seeing as you were a resource for the people as well you know so get that money i was gonna say graduate as fast as possible you feel me so if you need to take a summer course next summer to get get out you know Figure out every single way you can get out, you know what I'm saying? Um, but take those resources, take that knowledge that you're, you're learning that isn't often available to everybody, you know what I'm saying, and bring it to the people and maintain yourself, you know what I'm saying? Use this experience you just had to, like, all right, when that time gets stressful, you know what I'm saying? Like, try and send it, like, this, some of the experiences you've had out here mm -hmm. is what I would say. It's like, all right, remember, this is home for you, you know what I'm saying? You take care of this mission and on to the next one, you know what I mean? And get, do a training and right you know in yeah. the continuum yeah i'll be looking at this shit as great practice of getting accustomed to sometimes doing things you don't want to do with the clear mission ahead of you you know what i'm saying i think um i've had this conversation with you before and with b i think like i know we're not the same generation but it's like that's such a small gap between our age group right like what is you gen z or some shit i don't know but you're not that much older than me yeah but it's like our, our generations have this thing where like motherfuckers be they like to complain a lot and some of it is a source of like entitlement of where it's like, you know, oh, my people have slaved enough or didn't like nigga, well, whatever. Let's not even call it slavery. Even liberation is going to be work. Liberation work is work. You know what I'm saying? And it's struggle and it's not easy. And it's, a lot of times, like, you don't fight packing that hygiene pack. You don't feel like distributing that hot meal. You don't feel like writing this curriculum for political education, but you got to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, that shit that I went through in college, it just, that working those jobs I didn't want to work, it created that muscle of doing the things I didn't want to do. And that shit not just going to. You're not going to just wake up one night and bury the struggle if you ain't never yeah. had to struggle in specific ways, right? Like, not just having to exist as a poor black person, but, like, really having to struggle and putting, having to train your mind in certain situations you don't want to be in, but still having to produce, still having to learn to, to retain information. Um, getting up when you don't feel like getting up, walking through that snow when you don't feel like, like, that's all shit I did when I was going to school in Idaho, you know what I'm saying? And that shit developed a habit and a character where I see people who don't follow through on certain tasks they ain't never had to struggle before mm -hmm. who don't like being called out on any shit because they ain't never been called to task before and like there's just certain ways it's only certain ways and certain experiences that you have to have to develop certain characteristics um and i'm again like you have there's been times me and you were talking to you i'm like all right actually you're right because this do sound like me being on some um like is it masochism you know, like where like you be like damn near searching for pain sometimes. <laughs> like there been times I've been trying to talk you through shit. You like I don't know, bro. I'm like you, actually you are right. I don't think you need to be struggling that damn hard because now yeah. it's starting to impact your humanity mm -hmm. and your livelihood. But there has to, you know, you got to practice your discernment. Where it's like, am I just you feel me, catting off? Like am I is this yeah. shit? Do I have the full ability and capacity to do this shit? Does doing it get me to my ultimate goal? Like that's when you know like all right, I can just stomach through this shit. You know, like it's not really impact. I just don't feel like doing it. I got the skills to do it. It is in alignment with my ultimate goal, but it's just starting to hurt my feelings a little bit and I'm tired. That's when you got to mm -hmm. practice that discernment as opposed to like, yo, this shit is actually, actually impacting my humanity and I need to walk away from it. Yeah, I think that's something um, Something I was thinking about last night. I started reading uh, Free to Land, right? And one of the things that they were talking about is like the um, your politics and how like ultimately like once you become a part of an organization or even like something as like a mass you start to take those practices and do it at home and stuff like that and I would say like over the last year or so like with the whole like blow up of Black Lives Matter and how that was really big on campuses like it was so big on campuses that it was like you're not a true black person if you don't go protest 
But these be the same people who don't speak up in class when a white professor mispronounces a black person's name or stuff like that. So thinking about like, okay, ego again, you know, like, am I actually not trying to do this because it is oppressive and it is against my politics or am I not trying to do this because I have the ability to say like, hey, look at all of the things I am. I shouldn't have to do this, you know, like, um ultimately it's a reflection or like it helps me to reflect on myself about the things that really matter to me because one I'm not at the institution to be a part of the institution I don't want to be in y'all programs I don't want to be on y'all like campaigns none of that I actually want to do the work that I'm here to do and so if it's like If it's me here saying I don't want to go back to school, I want to finish school, but then go to school and not do the things to finish school, it's like how much do I actually want that? Um, And then being here at the organization, I think the biggest thing that helped me is that, like, bruh, this is your work. Like, this is for you. This is for your life. This is not for a promotion. This is not for recognition. This is not for, like, clout this is for like your well-being and like the progression to new africa and if you're not willing to do the work why should you reap the benefit so been constantly like checking myself on like yes i do deserve like black privacy and rest and like being able to prioritize my joy and like the ability to not do shit but i also have to do work in order to ensure that those things are accessible for me facts that's perfect that's a great way to sum it up yeah, I ain't got nothing else to add on that. <laughs> what do we tell the niggas though that if, we, if they want to support you, oh yeah, support the black free. Oh, if y'all want to support me, um, I will put my cash apps in my Instagram bio. My Instagram is at underscore m i c h a l a a. Um, I'm also a poet, and the girl might produce something at the end of this year, you know, feeling very inspired. So if I end up selling any products, anti-capitalist, but you know, I am in a capitalist system. So I do need money to survive. Y'all can always donate to me. We're going to push her cash app in the, on the Patreon and in the like description section of the YouTube video. Also support me by supporting them, become Patreons, you know, all of those things, because it goes back into the community. Patreon.com, so it's whole black pot. Tap in this next part of the episode, you got to subscribe, you hit the paywall. Unfortunately, unfortunately for us. For what? So, appreciate you. Thank you. Jumping game. Appreciate y'all for having me. And congrats on the summer, you know, hopefully you're going in with a, a different you know, understanding, you know what I'm saying? And that will get you through those times. So proud of you. Oh, my heart. <laughs> yeah, definitely made family out of this. So love y'all. Love, love you too. too. Hella Black, episode 107.